If you want to run Kali Linux on your PC without installing it directly, a virtual machine is the perfect solution. In this video, I'll guide you step by step on how to install Kali Linux using VirtualBox. So, without wasting any time, let's get started. Before starting the installation, there's just one thing you need to check. Open Task Manager, navigate to the Performance tab, and click on CPU. Ensure that virtualization is enabled. If it is, you're all set. If not, simply enable it in the BIOS settings. Open your browser and search for VirtualBox. Let's click on the first link and go to the download page. Here you'll need to download both the Windows hosts and the extension pack files. Once you've downloaded these two files, search for Kali Linux and again click on the first link. Then click on the download. Here you need to choose your platform, just click on the installer image. Scroll down slightly. On the recommended image, click on this small download icon. The download will start immediately. After downloading all the required files, select the VirtualBox executable file, right-click on it and run it as an administrator. Click Next, accept the terms, and continue clicking Next until you reach the network warning. Here, click Yes to proceed. If you don't want to create a desktop shortcut, simply uncheck the option before clicking Next again. Then click Install. The installation will take a few seconds. Once completed, click Finish. VirtualBox will open automatically and prompt you to choose an experience mode. Select Expert Mode. Next, open the File Manager and double-click on the extension file. This will bring up an extension installation pop-up. Click Install, scroll through the terms to the end and click I agree. For Cardi, after a short wait, the extension will be installed successfully. Click on New and enter Kali Linux as the name. Set the type to Linux and the subtype to Debian. Then select Debian 64-bit as the version. In the Hardware section, allocate RAM based on your system's resources. It's generally recommended to use half of your total RAM and resources for virtual machines. And for Kali Linux, the minimum requirement is 2 GB for basic tasks, while 4 GB is preferable for better performance and multitasking. In my case, my system has 16 GB of RAM, so I'll allocate 4 GB. Next, configure the processor cores. Open Task Manager and check the available cores. I have a total of 4 cores, so I'll assign 2 cores for this setup. Now allocate virtual hard disk space. The recommended minimum for Kali Linux is 20 GB, but I'll provide 40 GB to ensure smooth operation. Keep in mind that this virtual storage is deducted from your system's C drive, so make sure you have enough free space. If your C drive doesn't have sufficient space, you can choose another partition for storage. Once you've entered all the details, click Finish to complete the setup. Now that our virtual machine is set up, let's tweak a few settings to optimize performance. First, open Settings and go to the Advanced tab. Set both options to bi-directional to allow seamless clipboard sharing and drag-and-drop functionality. Next, under System in the Acceleration tab, make sure hardware virtualization is enabled. Moving on to Display, maximize the video memory and ensure the graphics controller is set to VMS VGA for the best compatibility. Now in the Storage section, click on Controller IDE, then select Empty. To click the small disk icon, choose Disk File, and navigate to the Downloads folder. Locate the Kali Linux image file and open it. Finally, head over to Network and check that the connection type is set to NAT. Worse, once everything is configured, just click OK, and the setup is complete. Now click on Start to begin the installation. After a few seconds, the setup will start. Select Graphical Install and proceed. First, choose your preferred language and click Continue. Then select your country and continue again. Next, choose your keyboard language and confirm your selection. After a few minutes, you'll reach the Network Configuration section. For the host name, rename it to Kali and continue. When prompted for the domain name, simply proceed without entering anything. Now, enter a username and click Continue. This will automatically register the username in all lowercase letters. Remember, when logging in, you must enter it exactly as you set it. Click Continue and then enter your password. Kali Linux will now detect the hard drive. Choose Guided, Use Entire Disk and Continue. Select your hard disk and confirm. Go with the recommended partitioning method and continue. You will see swap and root partitions listed. Select finish partitioning and continue. Click yes to proceed. This part may take some time depending on your system's resources. Once this is complete, the software selection screen will appear. Usually the recommended selection works best, so choose that and continue with the installation. This step will take some time again. Once finished, select yes to install the grub bootloader and continue. Provide the hard drive location and proceed. 
After the installation is complete, click Continue to reboot the system. VirtualBox will automatically restart. Once it does, select Kaylee GNU Linux from the boot menu. After a few seconds, the login screen will appear. Just enter your username and password, and you're all set. As you can see, Kali Linux is running perfectly on VirtualBox. First, let's set it to full screen mode. Simply click on View, then select full screen mode and click Switch. The internet is working smoothly, and all essential tools are available in the Start menu. The main command prompt is also functioning correctly. If you need to exit full screen mode, just move your cursor to the bottom center, click on View again, and select full screen mode to toggle it off. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Stay tuned.